Shalom Avrach and welcome to the weekly piece on the Parsha from Torah Giants on Chomish, written by Rabbi Yitzchak, Mayor Gimel, and Rabbi Meredith of Yom Yisrael Rockway. Sit back and enjoy. Welcome to Torah Giants on Chomish. I'm Steve Keller. This week, Rabbi Goodman is going to tackle another famous enigmatic episode in the book of Bracious. How can we say that the Avos kept the Torah, yet Yaakov could marry two sisters? As he does so consistently, Rabbi Goodman is going to deliver a much clearer and more complete understanding of this foundational issue. Ranban posits that our forefathers observed the Torah, but only in the land of Israel, whereas Yaakov read it Rachel and Leah in Chutzlaretz. For this reason, Rachel died upon Yaakov's return to Eretz Yisrael. Much more mystical and obscure is the analysis of Rav Shlomo ben Adaris, the Rashba, in his Responsa, Part 1, Tshuva 94, he states that all mitzvahs reflect pure wisdom. Therefore, using one's own wisdom, our forefathers intuited every mitzvah. Regarding Yaakov's marriages, however, he notes cryptically that the three pillars of Torah are time, place, and object, each of which determines certain laws. But then he writes, I cannot explain further, but those with understanding will find the truth. Asked to clarify this statement, Rav David Ibn Zimri of Egypt, the Radbaz, simply concludes that Yaakov was a unique being with special prerogatives. Yaakov's likeness is engraved on Hashem's Kisei HaKavod. According to the Radbaz, if you know why Leah was worthy of burial in Machpelah while Rachel was laid to rest at the crossroads, you will understand the secret of the two sisters. Obviously, not everyone was satisfied with these two mystical answers. So when pressed, the Radbaz finally, Baruch Hashem, offers a simple interpretation. When Rachel and Leah converted to Judaism, all of their familial relationships became null and void, so they were no longer sisters. While the explanation that Rachel and Leah converted to Judaism, thus overriding their original familial relationships, is fascinating, aren't we also curious about the other two explanations hinted at by the Rashba and the Radbaz? I was as well, and I was fortunate to reach the Gon, Harav Eitan Feiner, Rav of the Congregation Knesset Israel, the White Shul in Farakaway, New York, and himself a Torah giant quoted by Rabbi Goodman later in the Sefer. On the first hint that Yaakov, with his image on Hashem's throne of glory, was uniquely capable of making decisions on laws like this, according to the brilliant Rabbi Feiner, Yitzchak had intended for his twins, Esav and Yaakov, to partner in the building of Klai Yisrael. Esav instead embarked on a life as a Russia, leaving the job of Tikkun Olam and building the Jewish nation solely to Yaakov. This changed Yaakov's plans, which now included how to proceed without Esav, and called for decisions made in that moment reflecting that reality. We see this point about the twins clearly in Rashi on our Parsha. Rashi, quoting a Medrash Rabbah, explains the Aini Leah Rakos. Leah thought she would have to marry Esav, and she therefore wept continually, because everyone had said Rivka has two sons, Laban has two daughters, the elder daughter for the elder son, the younger daughter for the younger son. This is exactly how the three pillars of Torah law, time, place, and object, each determined the outcome of certain laws. Yaakov had to accept the change of plans with Esav out of the picture, and ultimately married both sisters. With regard to the Radbaz's second cryptic clue, if you know why Leah was worthy of burial in Machpelah while Rachel was laid to rest at the crossroads, he says, you will understand the secret of the two sisters. For this, Rabbi Feiner adds more brilliant color. He says, the very destinies of both sisters point us to the reason each was buried where they were. Rachel gave birth to Yosef, who brought the 70 members of Yaakov's family down to Egypt, the first step in Hashem bringing them out through Moshe and to Eretz Yisrael. In the future, Mashiach ben Yosef will once again assemble the Jews for our journey back to Eretz Yisrael. Follow Mashiach ben David, Leah's offspring, to that final destiny. Thus, according to the Holy Rav Feiner, Rachel was buried on the way for Jews throughout time on their own journeys to Davin at her kever and to eventually welcome the Jews back to Eretz Yisrael at the end of days. Leah, the first one married, was buried in Machpelah to keep the Shlemus of the Avos buried together again at a holy site where Jews for millennia still come to Davin. Just an amazing picture painted by both the sources brought to us by Rabbi Goodman and the added color on this entire subject by Harav Eitan Feiner. Thank you again for watching. Once again, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and how can you not tell your friends and family to do so, sharing Rabbi Goodman's lifetime of Torah so none of you miss another 
another amazing insight from his masterpiece, Torah Giants Unplugged.